Welcome to the continuation of our class series on post 302, which is history of political thought to Africa, where we look at the ideas or theories of um, African political thinkers, African philosophers. And um, in this class, we'll be looking at the political thoughts of Lepo Seda Sengo. African political thought has evolved over time and one of the leading voices in the development of African political thought is the former Senegalese president Lepo Seda Senghor. Um, expected learning outcome. At the end of this class we are expected that the student should be able to explain the life and contributions of Lepo Seda Senghor to African political thought. Let's now look at life and contributions of Sengo to African political thought. Lepo Seda Sengo lived between 9th October 1906 and 20th December 2001. He was a Senegalese politician and African political and cultural theorist who served as the first president of Senegal between 1960 and 1980. Senghor was the first African member of the Académique Française. He was born in a small coastal city of Jao, about 100 kilometers south of Dakar, to the family of Basile Dionge Senghor, a businessman belonging to the bourgeois tribe of Sierra, uh, a minority group in Senegal at that time. At the age of eight, Lepo Senghor began his studies in Senegal. In 1928, Senghor traveled to France to begin his 16 years of post-secondary studies at the Sorbonne and graduated from the University of Paris, where he was designated professor between 1935 and 1945. In 1939, Senghor was enrolled as a French army officer within the 59th Colonial Infantry Division. A year later, he was taken prisoner by the Germans. He took French citizenship in France and fought in World War II. As we all know, at that time, because of the French colonial policy of assimilado, assimilation, every French elite in the colonies especially, or from the colonies especially, are expected to be integrated and to be given French citizenship. So Lepo Seda Senghu was not an exception. Later in 1946, he combined his poetic thought with politics, philosophical principles in the struggle to drive away aliens into French National Assembly as a socialist deputy for Senegal. He was based in France, but as a Senegalese, he was given that opportunity to participate in politics and, of course, made his voice known. So Senghor was finally elected as first African president of Senegal on 5th September 1960. Senghor's contribution to contemporary African political thought are contained in his numerous works, which include what is Negritude, published in 1960, National and African Socialism, published in 1969. In 1964, he published the first volume of a series of five titled Liberty. Although a socialist, Sengo avoided the Marxist and anti-Western ideology that had become popular in post-colonial Africa favoring the maintenance of close ties with France and Western world. Perhaps that single factor was responsible for the cooperation he received from the Western world since he was not an avowed open Marxist. Now, Senghor and genuine independence. This is one of his political ideas that has stood out in his political ideas, Sengo focuses on the question of genuine independence for Africa. For him, true independence is that in the spirit. 
Senghor sees nationhood as reconstruction, that is conscious will to construct and reconstruct. In the process of reconstruction, wherever you have failed, you should be able to reconstruct what has failed, a continuation of the process of nation building. Reconstruction will channel pre-colonial values of fatherlands into a unity that will eventually achieve a single nation to a single people by a common purpose. This nationhood, according to Senghor, can be attained through a federal state. While accepting socialism as a reality or as a basis of a federal system of government, he rejected atheistic Marxism, arguing that dialectical materialism is not the only scientific method of analyzing social reality because he never believed there is no God, unlike the classical or atheistic Marxist. In problem solving, Senghor sees African socialism as a synthesis that is combination of a number of different factors of African socialist roots and the values assimilated from the European colonizers. The achievement of this synthesis depends, according to him, on the importance that we attach to culture. Therefore, it is a combination, it is a synthesis of African values with that of European. By combining these two forces, we should be able to find solution to whatever problems we have in Africa, according to Lepo Seda Senghor. Now, his other political thought, which has become very popular, is his idea of negritude. According to Sengo, it is the awareness, defense, and improvement of African culture and values that is the meaning of negritude. Sengo perceived negritude in terms of whole complex of civilized values which characterize the Negro African world essentially informed by intuitive reasons. To him, negritude does not merely deal with the defense of a skin or color or attachment to a particular race. That is not the essence of negritude. It is that part of human civilization that is characterized more with human rights, sense of communion and brotherhood, rhythm, which are products of the synthesis of Africa and European culture, meaning the good part of the European culture and the good values of African culture combined together, it is what makes it negritude. Therefore, negritude is African nationalism geared towards adjusting to the capitalist mode of production. Senghor advocated for an African socialism which will involve a community of African studies, solidarity, united in a common purpose to a new Negro African nation. Now, let's look at his involvement in the Brazzaville group. Many African states had attained independence by 1960. And by this time, their different colonial orientations to Pan-Africanism became more glaring and manifested in their allegiance in the Congo Zaire crisis, which erupted in 1960. These differences were later to manifest themselves in the emergence of factions within the Pan-African movements. The crisis in Congo Zaire at that time divided the independent African countries along ideological lines, especially uh, those who were colonized by France and those who were colonized by uh, the British. They had different and divergent views about the crisis in Congo Zaire. By April 1960, many states which were formerly under French colonial rule in West Africa as well as equatorial Africa had become independent and addressed themselves to the issue of African unity and its implications. 
in a meeting summoned by President Felix Rafi Bonye of uh, Ivory Coast in Abidjan in October 1960, only the former members of French West Africa were invited. Issues discussed included the Algerian question, the Congo crisis, and the admission of Mauritania to the United Nations. Clearly, these issues uh, created a division among the independent African countries at that time. So, those who took side with the Brazzaville group, principally were the French-speaking countries. Senghor's perception of the fact that dialectical materialism only indicated the primary role of economic factors in understanding the society is the hallmark of his intellectual genius. Economic factors in human society are deterministic, but not dominant factor. The dominant factor is politics, because it is the politicians who are in power. They determine what happens to the economy. They determine how economic resources are shared. So it is not only the dialectics of economic that matters. Politics is an important factor because at the end of the day, it determines the direction of the economy. However, Senghor's belief in nationhood called reconstruction, which will channel the parochial value of fatherland into a single people united by a common purpose under socialism, certainly is unscientific because the present state of affairs in Africa evolve with the capitalistic mode of production. What we have in Africa are capitalist nations created by force and the ideology of colonialism. They didn't just create it. They didn't create themselves. They were created by the colonialists. So the process of social integration into a state in terms of nationhood, therefore, is a function of ideology. The state is therefore contaminous with nation and represent the specific manifestation of class struggle at any historical period. A nation cannot be created from the different African states by wishful thinking or mere proclamation. Negritude is seen as African cultural nationalism is not relevant as long as it fails to address the structure of African political economy, which is most important. African economics are vertically integrated with the economies of advanced capitalist states, which results in unequal exchange, which has reduced African economies to producers of raw materials, which are exported to the industrialized countries at the end of the day, they still determine how they buy the raw materials and the end products, how it is sold to us here in Africa. So African consciousness or awareness can only begin with the objective development of the productive force that is improving the knowledge, tools, and techniques of production. This is what can guarantee independence and respect for the Africans and nothing more. Because there is nothing wrong with human races in terms of their skin pigmentation. The only thing that can be wrong with a race is the inferiority of their productive forces in relation to other races, which is the greatest challenge Africa and Africans are facing today. Thank you. We shall consolidate in the next class.